I have to talk to people, someone every day about moving either out of the Bay Area into the greater Sacramento region, that seems to be their first stop, or to other states. There, there's this big migration that's occurring. So what's going on, Rick? Why are so many people moving? What are they telling you? Well, we are seeing a tremendous change in the way people think and the way people live their lives, and especially where they live. Uh, there was a time in history where people flocked to the big cities, mm -hmm. and whether that be in our area, the San Francisco's, uh, they would live there, they worked there, there was um, a great reason for them to be in these large, what we call in our industry, the megaopolises. They're just huge. Today, we are seeing a U-turn. We are seeing uh, residents move out of San Francisco, and their first destination is the East Bay Area, both Alameda and Contra Costa County. They move out of the city, and they go from urban to suburban. Mm -hmm. And this is happening. This is not a uh, what we're seeing only in our Bay Area. This is happening all over our country. Mm -hmm. Those that are moving out of main urban environments and they're moving to suburb and that's their first stop. And why are they doing it? Well, because they don't have to work from San Francisco anymore. They can get a lot more for their money in the East Bay than they could ever get in San Francisco or some of the surrounding cities. But they don't stop at the East Bay. Those that are often in the East Bay where we live, they're moving and their first stop is the greater Sacramento region. And they're moving from suburban to a little less density, but it's still a suburban, even suburban, some areas are slash rural communities. Uh, and they're moving in, they're, they're in droves. Elk Grove is exploding. Roseville, Folsom, El Dorado Hills, Citrus Heights, the greater Sacramento area. It is um, exploding with new growth and development. Christina, last I checked, there were over 200 new home builders in the Sacramento region. Wow. 200 <laughs> new home builders. There's, there's not a uh, an acre where dirt's not being overturned and um, because of all the new development. And then what's happening is they're moving from the state of California and they are visit, they are going to places like Texas, Idaho, Arizona is huge. Mm -hmm. Tennessee is just being flooded with California residents. Um, and they're moving from the suburban to rural. So from urban to suburban, from suburban to rural communities, and that's the great migration that we're, we're seeing. You and I even wrote a book on this topic called The California Great Migration uh, because we saw it a couple of years ago when we knew that homeowners and our friends and family and clients would call us and we knew that there was something happening. Now we're seeing newspaper, uh, news outlet, uh, news apps talking about this on a regular basis. So you mentioned some of the popular or popular states that people yeah. are going to. So what makes these certain states so appealing? What do they have that California is lacking or, or what are they hoping to find there? Well, there's a couple of things from a real estate perspective. And, you know, I think there's a lot of things that are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are moving because of they disagree politically. Uh, other people want a slower pace of life. Uh, we hear that quite frequently. Living in the Bay Area is a very fast-paced life. Very Things are happening at the speed of light all the time. Uh, up early, on the BART train, traveling into the city, coming back late, and doing it all over again every day. Mm -hmm. um, and I see a lot of people that are looking for a different pace of life. Uh, some people are moving for real estate, and that's kind of where we specialize in. And they're wanting a, a bigger home mm -hmm. at a little lesser price. And, and they're getting it because these communities generally, although they're rapidly appreciating too, but they're still a, a fraction of what the homes are worth here in the Bay Area. And so they're selling a property that's gone up in value tremendously over the last 10, 12 years as the real estate market continues to boom and even accelerates that boom. And they're finding new locations. I was on the call uh, this morning with about 12 different real estate brokers and team leaders throughout the country. 
and most of them acknowledge that California residents are moving to their cities. Mm -hmm. And that's just a microcosm of what's existing, what's, what's occurring across the country. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if um, a lot of our listeners know this, but you are a national real estate coach. You have your pulse, not just in California, but across the nation. So I want to know, is the market as hot and busy as it is in California? We've seen homes with an abundance of offers here going way over asking price. So is the same thing happening in other states? Every single state, Christina. Really? Not a single state in California, in, according to the Association of Realtors from year to year, not a single state has more homes available for sale this year than they did last year. In other words, wow. there are less inventory. Statistically, February of this year, there was 47% less inventory in the United States. There's just not enough homes being built. There's a rapid growth in population. Um, we see interest rates that are adding fuel to this fire, and there's just not enough housing uh, for the demand to meet the demand. And I know there's so much more I'm holding my tongue, and you know that on what I could talk, what I want to talk about with all that, why that's happening. Uh, you and I spent a good 45 minutes to an hour last week on the podcast. So if somebody's interested in why is this happening? Uh, and they're asking that question, why are we having such little inventory? Where are the homes available for sale? And why are home values rising as fast as they are? Um, click on, uh, after you listen to this podcast, click on that podcast, which was the one we did right before this one, mm -hmm. on five reasons we're seeing the market not have enough inventory and rapid appreciation on home values. Mm-hmm. And so today we're talking about the five things that people need to know if they're planning this move or even just thinking about it. So let's dig into that. So if yeah. someone's thinking about moving out of California, how do they even start the process? It's overwhelming. Well, the first thing they do, Christina, you know, even before they've decided on a community or another state or where they're going to move or what kind of house they're going to buy, the very first thing they need, need to know is they need to know what their home value is. Mm -hmm. They need to know what their home is worth. And somebody would say, well, I can go on Zillow. Zillow could not be more incorrect than what it is right now. Zillow could not be further from the truth. And, and why is that? Is Zillow bad or evil? No, none of that. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Zillow bases their experience and their value, what they call their Zestimate, they, they base it on past sales. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think about it, a home that sold six months ago in an appreciating market is worth a lot less than a home today. And so the Zestimate is inaccurate today in most homes. So you can't rely on it. So what's your home really worth? That's the question. And that's kind of the basis because then for most people, they've got a lot more equity in their home than they realize. Maybe they haven't checked it in several months or even in a year or several years. And they have no idea how much equity they've accumulated. Knowing your home value and how much equity you have gives you the, it gives you the number that you need for your pre-approval, which is step two get pre-approved to purchase that next home. Doesn't really matter where you're going to buy. Just know what your affordability is. I would encourage you to check out a 15-year mortgage. You may find that to be a possibility as a result of your home value rising and having more equity than you anticipated. Buying in a community that's at a lower uh, purchase price, you might find that you're able to do a 15-year mortgage. But number two is get pre-approved. And now you know what your home is worth and what kind of equity that you'll have. And then you know what you can afford. And that's really the first two steps in this process. Oh, that's great advice. And the, the next part, it seems like, is what do I need to do to prep my house for sale? I'm doing it right now. I had one of your amazing agents come to my house yesterday, Linda Tambury. I, we walked through my house with a notepad and she told me all this valuable information I didn't even think about. So what are some things we need to do to prep our home for maximum return? Well, I think there's two things that you need to do. Number one, you need to prep your home for maximum return. That's, that's true. And I'll talk about that. But you also need to discover how are you going to transition from one home to the next? Mm -hmm. Like, how does, that, how does that work? Are you going to move to two different properties in the interim until you find one? Are you going to do a rent? What are you going to do? Are you going to do a rent back that allows you to stay in the property for a period of time after you close? So the first one is, um, how do you prepare your home for sale? And here's the funny thing, Christina. Most people, uh, when what they think they need to do, they absolutely do not and should not do. Really? Here are the things that I hear time and time again. Rick, I'm going to replace that fence. 
Hmm. Rick, you know, that roof is old. It doesn't leak, but it's old. I'm gonna put a new roof on. Or, uh, you know, it's just time to do a new water heater. None of those things need to be done. Nobody's gonna pay more money for a home that has a new fence versus an old fence. Hmm. And so there are five things that we have found if you do them over and over and over again, and you do these five things, they produce the highest return on your investment. Number one, and by far is, is landscaping. Curb appeal today is the most important thing. Think about when you're looking for a home online. Maybe you're looking at realtor.com. Maybe you're looking at our website. What's the first picture that you see, Christina, of every home? Yeah, the outside of the home. Is it the kitchen? What do you see? You see the front of the house, right? Mm -hmm. And so having great curb appeal gives you a great front photo and a great front photo unlocks the other photos that you're going to take of that beautiful kitchen, the upgraded bathroom and all the other things. Number two, flooring goes a long ways. Mm -hmm. Flooring makes a tremendous difference to a property. Some flooring can just be cleaned. Others need to be replaced. It gives a consistency, it gives a fresh smell. You ever get into a new car or walk into a new home? It has a a feeling of new yeah. um, in part of it. It might be new flooring that's in this new home that makes it feel like a new property. Uh, another one that's very, very helpful. Paint goes a long way. Think about a can of paint. It's $25, $30 and it covers several walls, right? A gallon of paint. And that, that completely changes the home. So painting with the right colors, generally earth tone colors work best. Mm -hmm. That's number three. That's huge for us. Uh, number four, I think is really important. It's a general cleaning of the home. You know what I found, Christina? Nobody likes to inherit somebody else's dirt. No. <laughs> <laughs> and what we think is cool, you know, which might be my kids' marks, you know, on the side of the door as they get older or their smudge marks or their handprints on the stainless steel refrigerator, the new homeowner doesn't think that's cool, right? Mm -hmm. They could care less about those smudge marks. And so a general cleaning windows, thorough cleaning of the property. And the last one we recommend is minimizing and doing the state right wide requirements. Minimizing less is more. Uh, the more. The more things you remove from a home, it looks bigger, it looks brighter, and in the minds of a buyer, it looks better. And then there are certain things in a state and in a county and in a city and unincorporated, incorporated parts of our community that you should do. Some communities require low flow toilets and others require gas shutoff valves and some require uh, a smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors and water heater strapping. And so different communities have different requirements and so you do those things. These are the five things that we suggest that people do. And when they do these homes, here's what happens. They get the highest possible price the market will bear for the home. Mm -hmm. They get it in a reasonable amount of time with the least amount of inconvenience. Those are the five that deliver those three results. And I found that this will be year number 19 that I'm doing this business. And I found that those are the three things that most people want when they're preparing to sell their home for sale. Is there like a percentage of the sale that we expect that we should put into the house to do these things like landscaping and painting? How much should we spend? Well, if you think about the things that I shared with you, they aren't what you typically have heard, invest in the mm -hmm. kitchen invest in the bathroom, right? I mean, this is where you would tip, remodel the kitchen, remodel the bathroom. Very rarely does that pay out today. Mm -hmm. And really what happens, Christina, um, is that you can reach that sales price without doing those things. Mm -hmm. Therefore, why don't you preserve that, those dollars, that investment capital for your purchase? Mm -hmm. And the five things that I suggested landscaping, paint, flooring, cleaning, and minimization and government retro retrofits, those five things that you would do, these are very aesthetic, very minimal, and frankly, take very little time and cost very little money in comparison to remodeling a kitchen or a bathroom. Yeah, that's great advice. And so uh, this is another thing we're super concerned about open houses right now. Yeah. So we're still battling COVID-19. I know we are approaching the orange tier, yeah. but I told you the house down the street had over a hundred people at the open house. And a lot of people, including us, were a little bit uh, hesitant to have that many strangers in oh. our house. What do we do? How, what's the best way to do an open house in this type of market? You don't. Yeah. 
you don't do them. And, and here's why, Christina, you know, um, there was a time where you, we would do a lot of open houses. There was a time that we do 20, 25 open houses per weekend as a real estate team. We don't do any of them right now. And why don't we do it? It's just not the right timing in the market to do that. The COVID implications of doing an open house, the technology has improved so much. Today, we use aerial drone photography to capture the exterior of the property. Mm -hmm. uh, we fly the drone through the house to get really incredible vide video footage. Really? We use Matterport tours so that you can zoom in and see the brand on that range or the microwave or the refrigerator. You could literally see what the brand is. Um, you can then use these Matterport tours to go through walls and look at various areas of the house. And all of that means that we can do some things today that were very, very difficult for us to do. We're now um, actually designing floor plans and virtually staging properties, hmm. virtually staging. So if you give us a house and it's completely vacant and we know we need to stage it, we're not going to bring in real furniture. We're going to virtually stage that property. We're going to build our own floor plan for the home, 3D virtual uh, virtual tours, 3D photography, Matterport tours, all of these things help provide the solution that most buyers were trying to capture in an open house. The open house is becoming ineffective. And in some cases it is dangerous because you are bringing people through a home in a, in a world where the pandemic and COVID is, is on most people's mind every day. And we're able to minimize that by using this really incredible technology. Mm -hmm. One thing I love about your team is that you have buyer specialists and they have an influx of qualified buyers. So you don't have to go and, and research Zillow and all of this to find a buyer. You have an abundance. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, we, right now is the time of this recording. I think we have 25 team members that are buyer specialists and we're looking for more. Uh, we actually scheduled nearly 200 appointments on behalf of our buyer specialists for our buyer specialist in the last 30 days uh, for clients to meet with. And so it's super, it's a, it's a really an exciting time to serve people if that's the business that you're in, or if you like watching HGTV and walking through properties. If you would say that walking through a model home is a fun pastime for you, or you, that you'd like to just go and travel and look at open houses, uh, this would be, this might be a great career for you. And if you're selling your home, you want to work with a real estate team that has a database of buyer specialists that work on their team that are specializing in helping uh, buyers find the right property and get their offer accepted. They want to specialize in that because you automatically have a huge pool of buyers that are available to look and explore your property. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of like the bachelor versus eHarmony. The bachelor, you have one available dude and all these chicks skip the drama. We're like eHarmony. We have yeah, matchmakers exactly. <laughs> and our matchmakers will make it smooth and easy and you'll avoid the drama. And I mean, obviously that's why I'm selling my house with you. And guys. they're great. And they bought into our culture. I mean, they believe we're what we call a very purpose-driven organization. I believe fundamentally that buying and selling a home is an unforgettable experience. And I don't think we do it all that often in our life, maybe a handful of times for most people. And it doesn't just affect the homeowner or the buyer or the seller or the agent. It affects everybody, the family, the children, the grandparents, aunts and uncles, neighbors, everybody is impacted. And if we only do this a few times in our life, shouldn't we have the kind of experience that we're excited to tell a friend about? And what I love about every one of our team members, without exception, they all believe that. Mm -hmm. They believe that uh, our clients deserve um, the kind of buying and selling experience that they're excited to tell a friend about. And that's what they're there to do. And our, our team continues to grow with that missional purpose. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I was thinking about moving out of state, but I didn't know where to go. <laughs> I mean, we've seen those huge brick homes in Texas that are like, Two ninety nine. That seemed amazing, no. but it's really hard to know, like what community, what neighborhood, what's the best fit for your family. So, how does someone research where to move? Oh, it's a great question. And so, really, the question is, how do you research where to move, mm -hmm. and then do you buy 
or do you rent? Yeah. I mean, really, that's what we're trying to discover, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And so the first thing is there's a lot of ways that you can learn a community. Uh, there's so many resources online today. There are so many videos online. There are so many reports of the school, reports about taxes, uh, local people that have a pulse on the market. And if you have time to explore that community, um, if you have time to get to know that area, that neighborhood, you should absolutely purchase when you make the move. Mm. And the reason why is you want to put that money back again in the real estate market and put it to work. You know, there's a financial term, Christina, called opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. And it means that you have a dollar and you have a choice on what you can do with that dollar. You can invest it or you can put it in your mattress, but you can't do both. You have a choice. And even doing nothing is, well, it's a choice that you've decided to do nothing with that dollar. So when it comes to real estate, real estate has been rapidly appreciating. If you feel comfortable with the community, you know the community, or you've had a chance to research the community that you're moving to, put that money to work. Do not let that money sit underneath a mattress or in a savings or money market account. Put it back in real estate and let it go to work for you. That's how you probably accumulated the equity in the first place. Let's get it back in the real estate and get it to work. But here's the flip side. If you don't know the community and um, if you don't know the area or you don't have time to explore the community before you make a purchase, then I want you to rent. Hmm. And I want you to rent because most people don't know whether they want to be on the left side of the track or the right side of the track in the community because they don't even know where the tracks are in the community. <laughs> and so in that environment, where you're hesitant, unfamiliar, you just don't know the community, it would be far better to rent a property, not forever, don't do it for 10 years, rent for six months, rent for a year, fine, sign a year lease, rent for a year, and then know what neighborhood you're in. Real estate was never designed to be a short-term asset. It's designed, even our tax codes say, live in the home for two or more years. And then you start qualifying for all these tax rules, right? Mm -hmm. It's designed to be a long-term hold asset. So if you don't know the community and you don't have the ability or the time to re research the community that you're in and you feel unfamiliar or uncomfortable with the community that you're moving to, then rent for a year and then get that money back in the real estate market and you'll be okay. You're not gonna get hurt. And you can do that. And that will make sure that you know the taxes in that community. You'll know the schools in that community. You'll know the local parks, the local amenities. You'll know all the different assets that that community has to offer. And, and you'll know it because you've lived there. And what I find is a lot of people who make the move and they take this advice and they rent for a period of, you know, six months, nine months or a year. They come back and say, oh my goodness, I'm so glad I would not live. I don't want to buy a home where I, where I first landed. Mm -hmm. Now that I know the community, I want to be over there or over there. And they make that move. So would you still use an agent, whether you're buying or renting? How do you find a good rental place if you're out of state? Oh, absolutely. Because I think that a good agent, even if they're not going to be helping you now, they shouldn't be looking for an immediate sale. And I know some of them do. And if you find somebody that's looking for an immediate sale, you're with the wrong person. Here's what they should be looking for, an immediate relationship. Hmm. Because at some point you're going to buy. Uh, and I get it. The agent's not paid typically until you're going to purchase. But if they can help you along the road long enough, mm -hmm. uh, even giving you some guidance, start sending you homes, you might not be ready. You might say, Rick, I'm unfamiliar. I'm going to take your advice and rent a property for a year. Um, but if we can begin to get you a pulse on what's happening in the market by sending you property, sharing with you what home values are, then when you walk into one and you're ready to buy, maybe after renting for a short period of time and you're ready to buy, you know it's a good deal. Your real estate agent knows it's a good deal. Everybody knows it's a good deal and you're going to make an offer on the property and you're going to feel really good about your purchase. So absolutely still engage with some of our incredible real estate agents across the country um, and don't be discouraged to do that. And how long are you allowed to rent? Isn't there uh, like two years before you get taxed on the profit of your sale? What's 
a daughter of a CPA, but I don't know the um, the the actual laws there's of it. CPA, by the way, you know, there's not, Christina. Okay. You don't have to reinvest that money. And really? we're talking about a primary residence, right? An investment mm -hmm. property is different and 1031 exchange is different. But in this context, we're talking about people who've lived in a home, maybe in the Bay Area or the greater Sacramento region, and they've got equity. They live there for two of the past five year, years. Mm -hmm. they've, they've utilized what's called IRS code 121, which says it's the primary residence. You've been there for two of the past five years. You sell it. Each person uh, uh, that's on title has $250,000 gain up to $500,000 for a married couple. And so a married couple can have 500,000 of gain um, off the property without having to reinvest it. Okay. But we don't want to lose, you know, when I talked about opportunity costs, mm -hmm. we don't want to lose the ability to re-engage those dollars back into the market. We don't want them sitting idle. Money needs to be working to make more money. Mm -hmm. And if money sits idle in any context, it's not even keeping up with the day, with the times that we're in. Because your milk, your gallon of milk is more expensive. Certainly a gallon of gas is more expensive. Uh, rent's more expensive. Your mortgage is more expensive. The higher the purchase price, the higher the loan amount. Your money can't keep up with that unless we put it back to work. So whether you take the approach of I'm going to rent for a short period of time, get familiar with the community mm -hmm. that I'm going to buy, or I'm going to put that money to work right away because I have a familiarity with the community. Either way, that money eventually needs to go to work. And I've heard you also recently say that as prices appreciate, if you wanted that five bedroom home next year, you not, may not be able to afford it and you have to do a four bedroom. Can you expand it's, on that? Well, it's the biggest challenge that I see today yeah. is that the market is appreciating at a rapid pace, meaning that home values are rising quickly. And last year at this time, those that could afford a five bedroom home, Christina, can today only afford a four bedroom home. And I think next year they'll be able to not afford the four bedroom home, but only the three bedroom home. And maybe wow. the year after that, it's not even a three bedroom home. It's now a condo or town home. And perhaps after that, they can't afford to buy real estate at all. Hmm. And so Everybody, uh, when it comes to real estate, they'll always say that the three most important things about real estate um, are location, location, location. Mm -hmm. And location is important. A property, a mobile home in Kansas is worth a lot less than a mobile home in Malibu, <laughs> right? Right. But few people talk about, I think, one of the most important traits in real estate, which is timing, timing, timing. Mm. Timing is everything. You think about it, 10 years ago, you could have bought a home for 50% of the value of what it was today. Wow. The location remained the same. It was the timing that was different. And so timing of real estate is imperative. Getting the right timing is so important when you're investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. And the longer you can put your money to work, at a minimum, if you're, if you're paying down a mortgage every month that you make a payment, especially with today's low interest, it drives down the principal balance. More of that payment goes to principal, less goes to interest, and you can gain equity that way too. Even if the market does plateau, you're still making progress by paying down your mortgage. So either way, we want to get that money to work as quickly as we can. Well, you just mentioned interest rates. Are they going to stay low over the next year? We think so. Um, the Fed chairman has made a, a very bold statement that for the next two years, interest rates are going to remain about uh, very, very low, just like they are now. And we think that's going to continue to add more uh, ability for homeowners, that for buyers to, to buy a home and keep their mortgage payment lower mm -hmm. than if they were to have experienced high interest rates. Good to know. Okay, so now we're ready to move out of state. Yep. How do we find an agent who'll help me find the right home? Because obviously we're out of state. The chances of me finding an agent that I know in Tennessee are next to none. So how do I find an agent that I can trust? Well, you know, um, Christina, and you you and I do these podcasts all the time, and I'm always a guy of threes, of five. Yes. The title <laughs> of this is five things to see, you know, to think about or five right. things to consider. So guess what I have? Five things to look for when you're looking to find a real estate agent. Bingo. <laughs> and um, so number one, look for a real estate team, not an agent. Don't look for an agent. Look for a real estate team. 
Um, a, a real estate agent who, if you just have one agent and they go on vacation or they get sick or maternity leave or whatever, uh, you, you don't have anyone who's looking out after your best interest. Get a real estate team and they can serve you together. Uh, get a real estate team and you're going to find out that you have more inventory to explore because oftentimes there are agents that have inventory or real estate or mar uh, properties that they can share with you. Get a real estate team because they are working together to accomplish this mission of providing people the kind of experience they're excited to tell a friend about. Uh, get a real estate team, you'll have a variety of different experience levels. You know, it was a couple of years ago, we did the math and we have over a hundred years of real estate experience. Wow. Now that's not all mine, but we have several team members that are on our team that they've got a lot more real estate sales experience than I do. And so you don't need any of that when everything's going smooth, but the moment you have a challenge in a real estate transaction, you're gonna be glad mm. you have a real estate team and there are other people on the team to bounce these ideas off of and find solutions to a low appraisal, to a problem that has a home inspection issue or termites or a seller that's not cooperating. So work with a real estate team, not an agent. It's very difficult for a solo agent to be all things to all people. And that's typically why they don't deliver a great experience to their clients. Mm -hmm. Number two, look for great reviews. You know, Christina, we wouldn't even go to a restaurant. We wouldn't stay at a hotel today. Uh, we don't watch a movie without reading reviews. Right. And it, it surprises me and it's sad to me that some people hire a real estate professional to sell their house and they never even read their reviews. Like, could there be anything more important than to hear of the experience of other people that have used their service before you go and say, this is my greatest financial asset. Would you help me get the most amount of money for it or help me buy a home that I'm going to live in and raise my family in? And we don't even read the experience of their past clients. So number two, read the reviews, go online, Google their name. And if, if there's no reviews, hello, that's telling you something. That's telling me something. If they have no reviews, if they have one or two reviews and they sign off mom, dad, that's a problem, right? Like you want to hear from their past clients. And uh, I'm sure my mom and dad have left me a review over the years, <laughs> too, so I shouldn't even use that joke. But I think you get what I'm saying is that we want to hear a depth of, of experience that other people have had with that real estate team. Number three, um, Christina, look at the sales of that team. Are they selling in the community you want to buy in? Uh, are they selling condos and townhomes and you want a single family home? Mm. Do they sell commercial property and you want a farm? Are they selling um, you know, uh, co-ops and row houses or are you looking for some acreage? So knowing where they're selling and what they're selling is imperative for you to have a great experience. If they're selling a lot of prop properties that look like something eventually you would like to buy, you're probably going to have a great experience with that real estate team. If they've never been to that neighborhood, both of you are going to be learning at the same time. And that is a recipe for disaster. How do we know um, what they're selling? How do we know if they're well, commercial or residential actually, or neighborhood? Uh, Zillow online has done a phenomenal job of gathering their sales data. So okay. here's a, here's a tip, type in their name, the real estate agent's name, and then right after the name, just put in Zillow. Mm -hmm. And usually you'll see, it'll tell you how many homes they've sold total, how many homes they've sold in the last 12 months and where those are. They'll actually plot them on a map and you'll be able to see whether or not they've been selling homes that you're interested in purchasing. So the type of property, but you'll be able to see whether they're selling them in the communities that you want to purchase in. Hmm. And that would be one of the things that I'd want to know. If I'm moving out of state, I want to know that they know the schools, that they know the tax rate, that they know about Mellow Ruse. I want to know if they know about uh, local parks and local amenities and the hiring, uh, the employers that are hiring in the community. I need them to know about the local contracts and laws and point of sale ordinances that are required. I need them to know that. I don't know that. I'm moving into the community. And so this is, I think, a really important thing for somebody to do. Type in their name, the real estate agent or the real estate team's name, and just put Zillow after. Look at the map. Where are they buying? Where are they selling homes? Where are they representing their clients? And are they the type of homes that you might want to purchase?
Oh, that's awesome to know. I didn't know that you could do that. <laughs> yep. So number four, you want to look at who they're endorsed by. Is anyone acknowledging them or are they all by themselves? So for example, uh, on our real estate team, we're endorsed by Dave Ramsey. We're an endor Dave Ramsey endorsed local provider. Uh, we've been voted for the last six, seven years best by the Chamber of Commerce. We last year were one small business of the year. Now you're looking out of state. If you're one of our clients and you're listening to this, we're not going to go out of state with you to help you find a home. You got to find somebody in that area that has endorsements that somebody's done a vetting process. Mm -hmm. Somebody's looked into it and said, this is a person that you should do business with. Are they featured in Top Agent Magazine? That would be an important factor. Um, are, are they a part of a networking group so that you, when you need a plumber or a painter or a landscaper or a house cleaner, that they can refer you to a member at the B&I group? Mm -hmm. These are all, I think, important things. They often get overlooked. Um, personally, if I'm looking for a real estate agent out of the state, I need some real estate advice. I'm going to look for somebody that's endorsed from a reputable organization. And would that be on the website of the specific agent or is that also on Zillow? And I think you, you go through this almost as kind of a, what we call a waterfall process. First, are they a real estate team? Second, do they have reviews? I'm not even talking to them, to be honest with you, if they don't have the top two. Mm -hmm. If they're not a team and they're not, or a part of a team and they don't have any reviews, I, I'm not getting to the, I'm not going to have a conversation with them. If they've got a lot of reviews, then I'm going to look and say, okay, where are they selling real estate? Okay, I see that they're selling or not selling in the communities and they're selling the kind of homes that I want to buy and sell. Um, and then I'm going to ask them on the phone, who, who do you, who recommend you? And if you hear, um, ah, uh, you know, they don't have an answer. Uh, there's nobody endorsing them. Be really careful about that. Be really cautious about anyone that says they're really good or that they can help you accomplish your goal but doesn't have any endorsements that support it or underscore it or bona fide that, that, you know, that opinion. And number five, Christina, look for their experience. Mm -hmm. Experience is so important in this industry. Um, I have said this for years, real estate would be very, very easy if it weren't for people. Mm -hmm. The moment you add in people, a buyer who wants the lowest price, the seller who wants the highest possible price, and a real estate professional that's smack dab right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And it'd be so easy if we didn't have those dynamics, but we do. And every one of them have those dynamics. And so having an, an agent, a real estate team that is experienced in negotiation, a real estate team that has a, a broker's license is very, very important, mm -hmm. which tends to have a little bit more education than a real, what we call a real estate agent or real estate salesperson. Uh, somebody who's been in the industry or with a team that's been in the industry for a while will be very, very helpful. They particularly may not be, have been in the industry, but do they have people that they're partnered with that have decades of experience? Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes they'll there'll be a real estate transaction or a real estate sale and it doesn't take that depth of experience and it can happen but occasionally there's something that is done said or happens in the course of a real estate transaction that without that experience it's all going to fall apart and with that experience we find solutions that well our clients didn't even think were possible so the last one is find a, a real estate team that is experienced. They have experience. Another way you could look at that is how many homes have they sold? Are you number one as a real estate team? You're their first sale or are you number 1300? Where are you at? And that can give you a better idea of whether they actually have the experience that you need. Because uh, remember, people don't do this very often. They certainly don't do this as often as they grab a hamburger or, mm -hmm. or go out to a movie. And so you, you want to have the best possible experience. You want to really sell your home for the highest possible price. You want it to be done with the least amount of inconvenience in a reasonable amount of time. And, a, and somebody with experience can help you navigate that and get that done. Mm -hmm. And I know you also put together a resource. It's called Rick's Pros for your customers and clients. Can you tell us a little bit about this tool? Christina, I could not be more excited about this tool. 
This has been an incredible journey and I got to thank you. You've been a really a big part of it and help me put this together. So all these things that I've shared with you about the steps associated, uh, we know that that's a big decision and you're probably not in this industry and you're thinking, how do I do all these things? So what we did is we went out and Christina, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have over a hundred real estate professionals now on our website all over the country. And we asked them to write two things. Number one, we asked them to write about themselves and their team. So you can hear about who you should be hiring. And number two, we asked them to write about their community. Because I find that somebody says, you know, I'm thinking about either Texas or Idaho or Tennessee. Like that's a, that's a pretty broad geographic territory. Mm -hmm. So you can go in and you can click on all these uh, states and you could read about their community and what they love about their community, what their clients love about the community. And it's going back to being familiar or unfamiliar with the community. And now you can get a little bit more familiarity with the community. And then if you like them, we've vetted them for you to make sure they're great. They're all a part of our coaching platforms. Mm -hmm. And so they know our language, they know our culture, they know who we are. And we've got over a hundred people throughout the entire United States and Canada that are ready to help you. We call it Rick's Pros because these are the people that I've been working with for, well, nearly 20 years now. And I'd love to put you in contact with them if you'd like to explore it. It's all on a website. It, there's no cost to our clients to use this service. It's our way of just providing a solution that we know they need. It's only, it's only half as good to have a great selling experience. It's twice as good to have a great spot selling and a great buying experience by having that right partner that you're working with on both sides is gonna be important. And what's great is you have a ton of listing specialists who can help on one side and they can work with the buyer specialist, coordinate the timing and everything. And I don't know where else anybody can find anything like this. This is very unique. And Christina, there are team members are throughout the Bay Area and Sacramento County. And so if you're making that migration, you know, I talked about from San Francisco to the East Bay or the East Bay to Sac the greater Sacramento region, like we can take care of you. We can do that. You move out of state, we're going to use one of our pros and uh, get you connected with them. Let you kind of ex explore the website and read about what they think is important in their community. If you like it, contact them. You don't go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then on each state, we have at least five agents. So, I mean, it really is shopping. You have a lot of options that suit your needs. So it's amazing. Yep. It's awesome. I love it. It's a great project. We're continuing to add more too. So every if, week, if you went there and you said, oh man, I don't have the community I'm looking at, go back. Uh, we probably have added them and check it out or message us. And we'll make sure that you get somebody that's in that community that believes in taking care of people. They believe it's not about selling real estate, it's about serving people. And they that, they know that you're not gonna do this all the, a, a lot. And so they're gonna make sure you have a great experience when you do it. Mm -hmm. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm so excited about this new platform that we've created. Uh, every person I've talked to on the agent side, They've all been wonderful people who are so excited to serve our clients. I mean, they're a great group of agents. So it's going to be interesting to watch how the market changes in the upcoming years. And Rick, I'm so grateful for you and that you're taking the time to share with us how to make the most of this unique season, especially the real estate market, market being what it is. So thank you. My pleasure. Join us next week when Rick will share with us the top seven questions everyone wants to know about the real estate market. There's a lot of questions, a lot of stuff going on. Here we are again with the top three, the top five, the six C's, the four D's. <laughs> I think we're good at math, you know, <laughs> add them all together. <laughs> the Rick Fuller thousand things you need to know, but each one we do need to know. So thank you. And everyone who's watching, thanks for spending part of your day with us. And we can't wait for you to join us next week. Thanks, Rick. Take care.